right, Dan. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm glad we just let loose so many swear words in that first bit. <laughs> no. Those hateful things that we said right at the beginning, we got those out of the way. In, yeah, in we, silent space together. They were very, really pent up inside of me. I just couldn't... It's been a long day. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and everything else has gone so well up until now. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. thanks, Una, for pulling that out. That was um, that's rather essential. We could have got halfway through this with no sound whatsoever. Um, we were talking about um, the labels we put on ourselves and um, and what Dan does. So obviously, this is Dan Berry. In case the sound really did dip out that much, this is Dan Berry. He is a comics artist extraordinaire. And um, what else did I say before? You were a maker of books and uh, nibs i think maker of books uh, pens uh, podcaster <laughs> yes um, of course the podcaster yes yeah all sorts hugely hugely successful podcast and one that's enjoyed by i probably i would say probably Li- te- tens. tens of people tens literally <laughs> you're joking you joke. i know you've got hundreds and hundreds of fans if not thousands because there's never you can see them on the patreon at the very least i know that so yeah we'll get into that <laughs> In a minute, actually. So we'll, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about your arts. I think um, initially we've got been raided on Twitch, so we have a, a, a party of people coming in from an, from another channel. Um, we have Alex, we have C coming in, and we have obviously Sandwich Twenty Four Seven and Prince Tomio. Here we are. Look, hello, hello, everybody. We now have an audience. So I'm sure you all know Dan Berry. He is. Oh, obviously, I'm not going to go through the introduction again, but uh, creator of uh, such books as. This one, oh, I'll put it on here actually. Hey, I made that one. Yeah, this is Carry Me. But you know, if you are sensitive like hey. me, then and you hey. fancy a cry. Hey, do you want to know? Um, do you want to know something about this book? Yes, please. That no one else knows. I've actually started working on a sequel. <gasps> Seriously? Seriously? Guess what I was doing right before? Um, right before we started recording. No way! That's fantastic. What brilliant news! Exclusive. I'm sure it will. We've got people actually here going, uh, yeah, so saying hello and nice to meet you. And also, uh, Alex says, is saying uh, how much she loves your books. Yeah, oh, thank you. Which is lovely. I'll put another one on. I've got, I've got this one here I can put under the. Uh, camera as well i'm on a boat the time i was on a boat there we go and it is brilliant actually it's longer than i expected when i bought this online i was uh oh, wasn't yeah. expecting it's quite a time it's fantastic and obviously it takes you on a bit of a journey as well it does that's the story of how i was on a boat and then i quit my job <laughs> see that's a real yeah there's, there's a real climax to that there that's a, that's a proper story with... i know but like comedy you know it, the rules of three and everything <laughs> It's funnier with the rules of two. I was going to go and I quit my job. Like, it's, it's much funnier. Especially when it's got that sort of dead end of a, oh my gosh, what happens now? <laughs> oh, actually, no, it's, uh, I was on a boat and I quit my job. And then, like, the most wonderful thing happened. You know when you're a kid and you're like, oh, I wish someone would buy me a skateboard. And no one yeah. ever does. Like, I went to, like, a castle by mistake. Uh, and this guy was there and there was, like, a medieval reenactment. And this guy looked at me and said, you're about the same size as me. Do you want to try on my suit of armour? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> of course and I, I do. Got to, got to try on some guy's suit of armour. That's and amazing. That's, yeah. That's so awesome. One of those days. Fantastic. And you just, you're, you're, you're fresh back from another adventure as well, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I've just been to um, uh, Denmark. I've just come back from Denmark. Fantastic. Because you are a teacher as well, aren't you? Yes, yeah, I've um, I've been teaching comics since two thousand and eight. Wow, that's a really long time. Yeah, <laughs> Sheesh. this is your thir- number thirteen year. That's uh, that's a serious milestone. That's, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah. yes, number thirteen. Uh, lucky for some. Abs- absolutely. Hopefully, you. <laughs> It's been pretty good so far, I think. Uh, what good. I was doing in Denmark, I was working with uh, some students from the Animation Workshop, which is uh, this incredible um, animation, graphic, storytelling um, school in Viborg in the north of Denmark. Fantastic. Great. It was really good. And I was working with a bunch of really, really good students on taking a bunch of their stories and just making them better. That was it. Cool. That was the whole thing. Like, hey, Dan, 
what should I do with this bit? I'm like, oh my god, let's make some stories really good. <laughs> and that was it. That was the whole two weeks. Did you just go around and go, uh, uh, put a robot in it, and then the next one yes. go, put a crocodile in it, and then just move on and just t- telling them what to put in? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you sort of like, you, you take out all the extra words and stuff, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of that. That sounds like an amazing job. <laughs> yeah, it's a... It's a heck of a time, let me tell you. We have for who's just joined us here. I am with Dan Berry here. I'm not going to introduce him again, but we're going to um, we're going to we're going to start <laughs> things. Actually, let me let me keep with this as the backdrop because we've got lots and lots to talk about. But let's uh, start the official pr- proceedings. We've, we've got our traditions. We've got to carry out. I'm going to start our activity. So, um, you're on draw with me. I uh, have to start with a couple of questions. Have you got a drink there? I think I saw you pick up a cup. Yeah, I just. I just choked on it, and I'm pretending that I did. Oh, uh, okay. What is this? <laughs> is it <laughs> is it engine oil? It looks a bit like. Uh, this is uh, just Ribena. Okay, that's good. That's standard. I think that's on the on the approved list. There. Have you had your dinner? I've had uh, some leftover pizza. <sighs> Classic dinner. That's brilliant dinner. It's pretty good. Good work, you. Excellent. So now those are out of the way. They're the two most important questions on the on the thing. I'm going to pull out this, and it is literally dusty because I haven't done one of these in a very long time. You can literally see the dust on top of the uh, the big okay. gold box, and um, this is where we get all of our suggestions from. They've been previously garnered from Twitter, and mm. uh, I'm going to pick out one from this section, one from the middle, whoop, and one from the end. And this is what we're going to be drawing today. I'm so, very excited. You should be. We have a suggestion from Rosie Packwood, a potato. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's not all, though. Okay. <laughs> it gets more exciting. A potato who is a cabinet minister. Okay. That's uh, thanks any, to Tom Byers for that one. one. A specific one or a... It just says cabinet minister, so go for your life. It's... Uh, I, I, <laughs> I've had to draw a lot of Michael Goves in my career. <laughs> Shall I ask why? <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a regular job uh, illustrating Michael Rosen poems, and he turns up quite a lot. <laughs> fantastic. What a great gig. <laughs> That's yeah, fantastic. Uh, I'll have to try and see if I can remember how to draw Michael Gove as a potato. Please, please uh, do. D- depending on what comes next. And, yeah, this is <laughs> even more of a challenge. Um the location that uh, the cabinet minister potato is going to be in is 1950s Vegas. 1950s Vegas. Oh, we can make hmm. this work, yeah. So here we get, uh, Una says there's a Jay Foreman song about what if a potato got in, into government. Who knew? <laughs> I mean, we'll find out in a minute with the Michael Gover. Like we've been learning <laughs> <laughs> fairly recently. <laughs> So that is it. That's all we have to do. And then I'm just going to say go, really. It's just start. And I'm going to fire okay. questions at you and make you talk while you're drawing. Right, okay. So shall I, shall I move over to my, um, my drawing? You can move over to hands cam, yeah, if you like. Okay. Let's see if uh, I can do this without ruining everything. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you haven't ruined everything. So that's positive. Hands cam here and alive and working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see those hands. Excellent. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So I'm, I'm going to draw, a, what, a, 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 what was it, cabinet minister? Potato a potato Vegas? cabinet minister in, in 50s Vegas. Now, yeah, you don't have to be too specific or precise on the clues. There is a lot of uh, poetic license, oh. shall we say. Oh, I, dis- I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be very specific. What's, what's the point of a brief? I'm going to follow it. Let's, uh, let's get very specific. Um Right, I'm going to try and remember how to draw Michael Go first. We might take a couple okay. of runs at this, because okay. um, he's a he's an interestingly um, specific looking fellow. Oh yeah, he's, he's not rotund, but uh, his uh, posterior is very large. Have you noticed that? Uh, he's um, he, he's <laughs> he's got back. <laughs> he's got back. Yeah, govey has got back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. That is good. Um, very full lips. Yes, as well. absolutely. You can see this, and sort of like a bit of a drippy face. But he's also a potato. Um, so I think he's going to have like potatoey 
ears sort of sticking <laughs> from him. <laughs> Potato ears is good. He's got big, I want to say kind eyes. Oh, yeah. Kind is better than googly, which is why I'm <laughs> <just> saying. <laughs> Um, and I think to make him a bit more potatoey, I might just give him a pair of trousers sort of <laughs> hanging from from the bottom of there. Uh, I like that. That works very nicely. I've got, I've just widened your screen a little bit, so you've got a little bit more leeway if you want it. Oh, because I've, I've just remembered that I've got to get, what, 70s, 60s, 50s? Oh, no, I forgot about that as well. 50, I mean, you could be 60s if you like. I mean, no one's going to really pick you up on it. I wouldn't have thought. Una's just picked me up, said I was streaming last night, and Una was kindly uh, tuning in there, and um, she's picked me up and saying, Tom, I thought you said you were going to be professional on this stream. That kind of went out the window quite quickly, I think. Um, but, you know, it's more fun this way, isn't it? Professional? Yeah, yeah. I mean, f more fun by not being professional, I mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, I, sh I should be behaving I'm myself. Cause Come on now. You are very professional on your, on your podcast. Uh, for people who don't know, um, uh, Dan does a podcast called Make Then Tell, so Make It Then Tell Everybody, um, mm -hmm. and it is fantastic. There's lots and lots of wonderful artists who, who talk about their, their work, their lives, their experience, all that sort of stuff, and it is absolutely amazing. It gives you such a brilliant insight into lots of different people's um, lives, and obviously yeah, you, there's a lot of relatable content on there as well for, for artists. So um, yes, you are very professional. How did, did did that take a while to come, or were you just naturally professional at um, presenting? I'm just so professional. Yeah, just a very professional <laughs> individual. <laughs> I, um, I think it was uh, initially probably a little bit of fear. Yeah, like oh my god, someone might listen to this, uh, and so then you know, putting on putting on your telephone voice so that, so that nobody um, nobody knows <laughs> exactly what you're like yeah um but i think the first couple i did were at the hippodrome in birmingham as part of uh, the birmingham zine festival oh cool um, the pe people who know me in real life know that i tend to um uh curse uh, and use uh, foul language <laughs> uh, sort of co conversationally um yeah quite, quite gleefully i think i'm going to try and draw a motel here and it doesn't seem to be working particularly well that's nice i put a very very low horizon point in that i don't think it's particularly good. Um, <laughs> some gove hair in there. Um, but there were kids in the audience, um, and so I didn't do any of that good, foul, good. foul cursing. Um, and then uh, that sort of became normal, uh, that I didn't didn't use any of that foul language. Oh, fantastic. You just got rid of it out of your system that easily. Yeah, that's it. I just um, disappeared up my own bum about it. And, um <laughs> was in incapable of um, swearing on the podcast again, <laughs> by and large. <laughs> that was nearly a decade ago, so you'd have thought I'd be over it. Wow, like, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, do you know how many guests you've not. had on? Uh, nearly 220? Wow! I think. That is I serious. probably look it up, but I've, I've got to draw a potato man. Oh, who's making you do that? Desert. Who's making me draw a potato? Yeah. <laughs> or who's making me record a podcast? <laughs> I don't know. A compulsion. Some wild compulsion for some reason. I'm not certain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm drawing potato man at all. Um, <laughs> I uh, actually have to say, I've got a bit of a personal story about your podcast, actually. It's um, when my uh, youngest daughter was born... Um, she was in hospital for quite a while after she was very ill uh, as as a mm. newborn, and on the drives to and from the hospital, I just was uh, obviously in a highly emotional state. I went through the back catalogue and make them tell. So I've got I feel weirdly emotional whenever I listen to it now because it still sticks with Aww. me. <laughs> so yes, I should thank you for that time for giving me comfort in that uh, di difficult that time. Good. All worked out for the best, thankfully. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm pleased to hear that. I was a bit worried about that conversation. <laughs> about where that might go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I associate your voice with... Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the real reason I asked you here today... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. It was my honey trap. <laughs> 
sweet, sweet bait as well. <laughs> it was, it was. Yeah, come and draw with me for no remuneration. Oh, yeah, did I tell you there was no remuneration? <laughs> Sorry that you're breaking up. I'm just going to have to go. Yeah. <laughs> you can invoice. It's fine. It's, uh... <laughs> oh, look at these beautiful, beautiful lips he's got here. Oh, this is gorgeous. Very full lips. I think I've mentioned already here. It's very kind of. <laughs> <laughs> like a deer. <laughs> I've, I've recently found it very funny describing um, uh, you know, monsters as having just kind eyes, very kind eyes. <laughs> no, that's funny to me. It's just, uh, it just is funny. Joy. Beowulf, very kind eyes. Oh. <laughs> But that's also awesome. something. I yeah, it was, it was literally just that that got you into the uh, the podcasting game. Say again. J- j- just that experience that then in Birmingham that got you into the game, and then just thought, well, let's let's carry on talking to people. Yeah, basically. Oh, he's um. Oh, sorry. Gover's got a bit of a lipstick dribble. I made them look like he's um, dribbling blood a little there for a second. <laughs> you don't want to make him um, look evil. No, he's got such kind eyes. I can't <laughs> do that here. The, um, yeah, that was basically it. Um, I thought when I started that there would be maybe, uh, I don't know, 50 people that I would be able to interview and then I would have used up all of the comic artists. <laughs> yeah, it's like, not recycling them. Yeah, and I'd just start all over again or, you know, I would have completed my task. Everyone would have been interviewed at that point. Yeah. Um, but I found that the more people I talk to, the more people there are to talk to and then it's sort of never ending. Yeah, fantastic. Does it take up a lot of your time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a, there's quite a lot of, um, uh, you know, the sort of research and reading and uh, and thinking that kind of goes into it, as well as um, the actual sort of recording and editing and um, the sort of logistics and planning as well. Yeah. Um, so it's there's a, there's a bit of you know, time and effort that goes into it. Um, obviously not... Uh, in in the inordinate amount of stuff. Yeah, but, uh, you still it's, have. It's a fair bit. Time to do the day job and create comics and see the family and uh, <laughs> all of this other stuff. Yeah, basically. I mean, it's um, it's all good fun, right? I've, I've moved back to Dan Cam. Oh, so you have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Drawn a um, I mean, he's only tiny. Uh, he is absolutely yeah. fantastic. I, have, I absolutely adore dangerous. him. I think he's fantastic. Thank you. I do. I just need to do a little bit of colour on mine, and then we can uh, pull out another. I'm going to see if I can um, take a drink without choking on it. This go time. on, go on, I believe in you. No, no promises. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was nerve wracking. The weight of expectation on me <laughs> to perform <laughs> under such pressure. I know, but this is it. No one, no one said it was going to be easy. I felt like an Olympian. <laughs> you looked like one as well, actually. I have to say, it was definitely a look there. All right, I shall, uh, I shall cease my. Um, I tried to go a slightly different angle. I tried to do a, um, a more David Cameron style sleazy politician in in Vegas with his um, potato bag of cash there. Oh, I see. <laughs> see. All right, hold on. My son is uh, asking for more screen time. Oh. Go on YouTube.com. What's the oh? What's the verdict? Denied. Denied. Oh. Denied. Denied. You could have said only if you watch Twitch <laughs> live on Twitch. <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> you can sit at the studio window and watch from that side. It's all right. <laughs> Should we do another one then? Let's do it. Alrighty. Alright, so that was the first one. We talked about podcast. The next one, hmm, what should we talk about next? Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll leave it a surprise. Does anyone for ask now. any questions? Uh, right, do ask questions, because I did say do ask questions before anybody was here. <laughs> anybody noticeable, so uh, they wouldn't know. Alex says podcasts are a source of great comfort, which I absolutely agree with, and, and have, done, have found that numerous times. Um, let's see what we're going to get this time. We have a hummingbird. Okay. Thanks to Andy CT for that one. We And the hummingbird is going to be a rock star. 
Okay. That makes sense. I can see it already. Yep. And on a farm. Farming bird rock star farm. Okay. Simple as that. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Jesus, uh, get some harder suggestions. Okay. Where we are here. Yeah. All right. Uh, right. My problem is I've already forgotten the first one. Hummingbird. Hummingbird. Rockstar farm. Hummingbird. Rockstar farm. That's it. I um. I've recently made a gu- another guitar. Um, I saw on your uh, on your Twitter. I did. Yeah, I made a um uh, a flying V. And I think that's like oh uh, I can't remember like sixteen guitars I've made over lockdown. Sixteen. Like yeah, I mean. Wow. I mean. Uh, no problem. No. <laughs> they're really long beats, aren't they? And they're very tiny. Right. Yeah, I think. Right. I'm just going to jump in and do it. Yeah, they're really tiny. Really long beats for getting into flowers and stuff, aren't they? That's the way. That's it. So, what are you doing with your six? Did you sell them? Um, or have you just got them? I'm practicing making guitars. I used to like tinker around with them when I was younger. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just enjoyed it. I've been playing guitar since I was like nine. Um, so uh, yeah, something to do over lockdown, um, making uh, guitars. So there's Fantastic. About, well, I've been giving giving them to my nieces. Um, oh, I'm nice. To, um, learn to play guitar. So my brother-in-law's got one. My nieces have all got a guitar. There's um, uh, fifteen of them or something in the house at the moment. <laughs> 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 That's incredible. <laughs> Kind of dumb. Um, <laughs> it's been uh, good fun. Uh, wow, that is good. Right. You, t- talking of your travel, obviously you've come back from from Denmark, and we know that um, mm. you've done some extensive travelling um, through uh, yeah. your professional career. Una has asked, "What's the favourite place you've been to?" Uh, favourite place I've been to. I really uh, liked. I really liked Finland. I liked Finland a lot. Good, right? A yeah. Times. Um, I enjoyed being in China. That was good fun. Wow. Um, spent some time in Algeria. That was good as well. I really like Canada. Wow. Canada's nice. You've travelled um, so much. Yeah, a, a fair bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got some fun travel tales, I think, um, from my uh, excursions, the wild times I've had. Well, there's, there's there's a good few. Well, I, I assume there's a a stock of stories in your uh, in your books to uh, to do. How many travelogs have you done with these uh, these sort of trips? Uh, only a few. I mean, there's been so many like weird like stories, like the suit of armor story. Yeah. Like, like sometimes I think to myself, like, oh, I lead a really boring life. You know, I spend all my days sitting down drawing or recording podcasts or you know. <laughs> Just uh, indoors, that. yeah. Uh, it, it sort of kid myself into thinking, "Oh, life's really boring. I'm kind of dull." And then I remember, like, no, uh, there was that time I was on a speedboat on the North Korean border. Like, <laughs> no, I'm not. Like, no, I, it's not boring. Like, that is that a really exciting time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so amazing. Yeah. How did you end up there? I mean, obviously, oh, there are certain assumptions, but on the North Korean border, on a speedboat, I mean, it seems like a bit of a scary place to be. It was, um, yeah, it was a bit nuts. It was back in 2016. I was, um, I was there with work. I was, uh, that was when I was working in the university. I got sent there to go and um, uh, teach in a um, university in the north of uh, China, uh, in a place right. called Tonghua. Which is over in the middle of nowhere. It's a city like bigger than Birmingham, um, but no one's ever heard of it over here. Because, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's China, and we tend not to pay that much attention. I don't think. <laughs> um, and um, so, uh, on the, the last day I was there, they said, "We'll take you out for a, uh, a day out. Do you want to go for a day out? We're going to see some sights." It had been a tough. It had been a challenging experience teaching there. Yeah, um, I didn't didn't particularly get on with the uh, the institute um, oh, no. made, it, made it a little bit challenging sort of politically with the, the place i was working in the yeah place um do you want to go out for a, a day out visiting I said yeah okay so they took me out in this in this van along with like um uh, i'm gonna talk with my hands for a second i'm gonna come back to uh 
so went through the scenery and it was like uh, Dragon Ball scenery. So it was just mountains <laughs> that were just like zigzags, yes. which is incredible. Yeah. So going in this little van along these tiny windy roads <laughs> uh, where it was like a cliff on one side and a cliff on the other. And we were overtaking things on corners and things. It was really crazy. Um, and they said, do you want to go inside a pyramid? Yeah. All right. So we're going to say no. Pyramid. It was just a pyramid. Like, um, that was pretty nuts. So we went inside a pyramid. That's crazy. Uh, and then I, I didn't know where we were. This is the main thing. Didn't know where we were. Yeah. Uh, so we got, got taken to a restaurant um, where these um, the, the waiting staff like came and did me a little song and a dance. <laughs> and they were like dressed up in like traditional pink robes, which was really weird. And I was like the only customer in there. Um, that was really weird. And then afterwards, they were like, do you want to go on a speedboat? I was like, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'm on this speedboat, and they sort of pointed the other side of the river and said, that's North Korea. And it was like a big, wide river. It's like the width of the Thames or something. And I thought, right, well, we're international border is yeah. North Korea. So we'll, we'll go halfway. It's the international border. This is North Korea. We'll go halfway. <laughs> we didn't. They sort of powered up the river <laughs> and then sort of cut the engines and we drifted back. But we were like spitting distance from North Korea and they're like pointing out all these like box holes on the other side of the banks. Like, that's where there's snipers. <laughs> oh, well, great. <laughs> Can we? Like, Turn around. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty nuts. Uh, so every time I think like, no, my life is so boring, it's dull. Like, no. What am I doing with myself? Like, no, it's not. It's really exciting. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, that's fantastic. So good. In your uh, good what, stuff. You, obviously you, you have taught in lots of different uh, different places over your sort of career in, in teaching there. Where have you spent the longest? Where's been your, your base? Uh, North Wales. Uh, right, teaching, okay. Uh, Excellent. Uh, Glyndor University in North Wales. Um, so I spent most of my time there. Yeah. Um, so I wrote the course, uh, the comics course that we taught there. Um, uh, that's where I left uh, to go freelance. So that's where Fantastic. I uh, spent most of my time. So we know uh, that there was some. Um, sorry, second. That's where I am now. Uh, yeah. Freelance now. Fantastic. So there's, yeah, you have had some uh, notable alumni. I know from um, from listening to your output. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want yeah, to uh, talk about any of these guys? Max Sarin. Um, Max Sarin. Through Giant Days. What do you mean? Um, this Giant Days. Well, not that, that cover. Days. This one. That's one. All this yeah, book here. Max Absolutely. One of my students. Beautiful thing. And also this as well, which is a more recent one. Um, as well, yeah. Absolutely awesome. This left me in awe. The drawing in here is just utterly amazing. Mm -hmm. It's such a high I was just every issue I got of it was left aghast reading it just going how are you so perfect <laughs> it's, just, it's just so good it's pretty dang good stuff um, yeah. uh, Ted Brandt and Rose Stein as well have been doing stuff uh, they've been doing Crowded uh, and they're doing other stuff now uh, which eludes me uh, Lyndon White is doing stuff with oh. Cast Iron Books uh, got a book That's another name I know. Yeah. Handles coming out soon. Um, Fantastic. And there are more, but that's eluding me now. It's seri it's yeah, seriously, I mean, this is absolutely fantastic. Were these were these guys just raw lumps of comic making clay when you when, when you had them and you moulded them into the professionals they are today? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take any credit there. They, they put in <laughs> a lot of hard work um, that I I would be a, a uh, a swine to take uh, any credit for. <laughs> but did did, did Max so, obviously come? Obviously, she's not from North Wales. Um, no, I pre I presume. So did did people come from far and wide to? Uh, yeah, to, yeah, to do the all course over the place. Um, we had people coming from. Uh, we had quite a few from Finland for a while. Um, Brilliant. I think, yeah, I think we. I think Max came, and then. But told everyone else, hey, come along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Loads, loads of folk from Finland. Uh, we had people from um, Sweden and from France, uh, Estonia, um, Poland, and uh, the UK, even. Um, quite a few people from Ireland as well. Um, 
uh, I'm trying to place people on the map now. Uh, Australia, have people come from Australia? Fantastic! Uh, All corners of the world. A couple really. of people, yeah, a couple of people from Japan. Um, quite a while ago. That's quite a long time ago, actually. Yeah. So it was. Um, it was. Yeah. It was a really interesting time. That's brilliant. How has it changed over the over the years? Is it is it um, are you getting different kinds of people now? Are people having are you seeing different influences that people are having these days? Or I think one of the main things that changed is when I um, when I started, it was kind of basically a fifty fifty split. It would be fifty percent guys, fifty percent girls. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that was essentially it. Fantastic. That's nice. Um, yeah. uh, but as it went on, like uh, they generally just got fewer and fewer guys. Right. Okay. Um, that was, I think, basically the the biggest takeaway. Um, we we kind of got almost told off by the university, like, "What are you doing to stop guys from applying?" <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure anything that I'm doing is. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Just attracting other ladies. It must be. I have no idea. <laughs> It was a bit, a bit wild, really. Oh, I should cut back and show you what I'm drawing. Yes, please do, please do. Because uh, my drawing is more interesting to look at than I am. <laughs> I don't know. That's... Oh wow! Oh, fantastic! I'm I like liking the, uh, the 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 cutaway and cut back because you get that uh, the the effect of it all here. The reveal. What a fantastic bird! He's only little. Yeah. Like deep in his head out over the top of the, um, the guitar there. <laughs> um, poor little thing. It's tiny. He's fantastic. He, she, I don't know. Maybe they. It could be... Uh... It's a... I think it's a they. Yeah, it's a they. A they bird. And again, it's just a... Yeah, a, a hummingbird gu- person. <laughs> The first time I was really aware of you was was through the podcast, and then obviously looked at, you know noted your art as well, and then I went to Thought Bubble in twenty I'm going to say fifteen in Leeds, but around twenty fifteen, oh, yeah. and I thought I know who I'll go and see. I had a list of a few people, and I thought I'll go and see Dan Berry and see what he's like as a, as a chap and have a chat, and I couldn't get near you. He's it was dreadful. <laughs> thing I tried but I couldn't get near there was just so many people around your oh, around wow. your table it was one of those ones it was you know quite a you know cramped hall and that sort of thing anyway but there was just it was yeah. yours was massively popular around there so I thought I'll have to um, put off meeting Dan <laughs> for this time <laughs> there have been a few times when it's been like just a bit nuts uh, yeah thought bubble. there's been times where it's uh, gone a bit crazy and then other times where it's been absolutely um, silent <laughs> 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 sort of like looking at your fingernails wondering what you've done just drive so many people away I know that feeling so so well <laughs> <laughs> what was the um, the third word that I've forgotten I remember farm it was the... based on a farm farm but yeah please don't feel free you know, don't, you know not to uh, mm. not to wreck your wonderful drawing by adding farm elements but if you can then give it a go I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find an elegant way to do it <laughs> We can skip um, it, it's fine. I, I might just pretend that it's um, it's actually in a dairy. Oh, nice, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, clearly, clearly this is in a dairy. <laughs> Actually, Alex has said on the on the chat that um, her uni had seventy uh, percent girls, and most of them wanted to do comics, and she wishes that she had gone on your course. No. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I think that's yeah. I think I would have been uh, much much better said if I had gone, to, you know, to to do something and got some direction. Yeah, I think a lot of people would think that way now. Um, was it Alex has often said it's um, people always catch me shoving a sandwich a sandwich down my throat at cons. Yeah, that's a very relatable feeling as well. You just go, you just wait for ages, and you're really enthusiastic. And you just go, I just have a bit of a subway, and then. <laughs> 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 One of my favourite things to do is, um, uh, like, if I have some, like, really dark chocolate. You know, you, you, you take, like, a little bit of dark chocolate. Yeah. Um, because you don't need much. It's just a little energy base. Yeah, absolutely, you know, like, yeah. Eat loads of it. A little bit of dark chocolate. But if you eat it and, like, just smear it all over your teeth, and then the next person that comes to the <laughs> thing, you give them a big, toothy grin. Like, fucking the teeth. 
oh. one of my favourite things to do. <laughs> I look forward to experiencing I that. Every time, but every now and again, there's, there's about eight people out there who've seen me do that. Like complete strangers, like. Yeah. yeah, you know that damn very. The one thing you don't know about him, it doesn't come across. <laughs> 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 Will you be doing Thought Bubble this year? Yes, yeah, I'm going to be there. Fantastic. I'll be there as well, so I shall catch you at that, at that point. I'm sure there will be other people watching who will be there. I know Alex will be there uh, in, the, in, the, in that crowd as well. So, uh, yeah, that will be good. It, I just can't wait to get back to cons now. And Thought Bubble's a great one to, 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 to put it all back with, I think. It's... Uh, yeah. Such a lovely, lovely festival. I'm very much looking forward to it. Have you done it lots of times? Well, obviously, I know you've done it at least three or four, but it's uh, is there is there uh, double think, digits in there? Uh, the I didn't do the very first one. Yeah. I wow. It, since it moved to like the big halls, I think I've done yeah. every single one. Fantastic! That's brilliant. And always, obviously, drawing good crowds. And obviously, you sell your, your pens there as well because you make. Uh, yeah, do you make the whole pen or the nib, or what's the what's the deal with those? I haven't seen. I've seen pictures um, of them, but it's not. Um... I'm trying to look around see if I've got one to hand. Um, <laughs> yes. I think I have one to hand. The nib stick in my mind as the as the picture. Uh, the thing is, I, I sold them. <laughs> yes, well, that's that's the that's the business part. That's a good thing. It's good that you sold them. Well, here we go. Right, this is a, uh, an older prototype, I guess. Oh, actually, let me move to um, uh, the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, then we'll get a nice uh, mm, macro a focus on it. So, uh, just... uh, it looks like you're threatening a hummingbird when you do that now. So, it's a, it's a brass uh, dip pen. So, it's got a folded brass. Fantastic. Nib. So, it's, uh, it gives you like a different drawing line depending on what angle you hold it at. Yeah. Uh, so I started with a, a basically a folded brass dip pen, moved on to a, a folded brass fountain pen, and now I'm working on a, a stainless steel version. Wow! Um, because the brass is actually uh, quite toxic to humans. Oh, is it? Um, oh God! Yeah, oh yeah! Oh yeah! It, um, <laughs> it's um, it's. <laughs> I had to cut, cut down the amount of them that I was making because uh, my body was getting poisoned. Um, wow. Your body like sort of absorbs the um, the, the zinc and the brass um, and makes it kind of ill. I had no idea. Wow. So stainless steel is the way to go now. That's the um... yeah yeah. I'm trying to work out a way to get someone else to make them in a factory somewhere. <laughs> yes. I think so that I don't have to like do it. Um, that would be ideal because it, it made me quite ill for a little while. Wow. Seriously. Oh yeah, Jeez, yeah. you poor man. It, it's um technically it's heavy metal poisoning. <laughs> it's the coolest poisoning I've ever heard of. <laughs> Doesn't feel super cool. Uh, I gotta be honest, it was pretty um pretty unnerving for a little while. How long ago was that? Like, that must have been relatively recently, was it? Uh, it was a, it was a few years ago. Was it? Um, it was when when I sort of first started making them. I didn't quite realise what I was doing when I was breathing in all that brass dust <laughs> so how long it lingers inside your system as well <laughs> yeah. probably oh, not brilliant. good <laughs> but yeah not ideal alright should we do a quick yeah. one more and then we'll, um, we'll we'll finish off with yeah. our eyes closed sure. good stuff alright I shall pull this out and oh, there we go yeah, Alex says it's literally suffering from your for your art, and that's uh, absolutely yeah. That pulls into something actually. What I wanted to to ask you about actually about suffering for your art. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about suffering. This is it? Oh, C has subscribed. Thank you very much. I think you might be my first subscription I've ever had on Twitch. So thank you very much, C. That's very sweet of you. That's what you've done for me, Dan. You've achieved that for me. Thank you. That'll be fifteen pounds, please. Okay, look, I shall send you that with your with the invoice. <laughs> Or you can do, I don't know how invoices work, apparently. That's why I'm poor. Uh, a kangaroo. A kangaroo. That's a strong start. Easy, yep. Oh, look, Alex is subbed. I'm so sorry, Alex. I forgot. <laughs> oh, no. That's my first. Alex was my first sub. Sorry, Alex. <sighs> he doesn't love you. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> so, a kangaroo, mm, uh, who's a personal shopper. 
Mm. <laughs> Interesting one. In Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that middle aisle in Aldi has got some wild, wild, wild goods down that aisle. Um, uh, personal kangaroo shopper in Aldi. That's right. Absolutely. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I ask a really dumb question? Go Is for it. Personal shopper, um, uh, someone that goes shopping for somebody else. Yes, I think so. Um, Somebody could correct me, but I would say that that, that is it. Yeah, you do the shopping okay. on someone's behalf. Normally, clothes shopping, I would assume, but it's um, obviously it's Aldi. So I, I, I clearly shop for myself. <laughs> you might have a kangaroo personal shopper. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> might have a, a similar sense of taste. To be honest. Right. It's, it's, hop on over. Hop on over to the hand. I like right. it. Uh, Right, okay. kangaroos are that easy to draw. Uh, he says with supreme confidence. Supre absolutely supreme. Now, yeah, one of the other, one of the I wanted to, to to talk to you about. I thought you might be learned in this aspect. Something I've wondered for for well for a long while about the creative process and how you go through mm -hmm. um, to 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 finding your style, to finding how you want to lay comics out. That that sort of thing. Everything that that goes from your creative process. Is it like? Do you think that that's a like a, like a travail that, that that you sort of get something out of at the end that you 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 pour over, or does it come from a creative instinct of of play and experimentation? It always sort of strikes me as the. Um, there was an old, uh, old quote from from Paul McCartney saying, "We don't work music; we play music because it's it, it, you know, that that creativity comes from a place of play rather than a sort of a, a place of of work." And I, I don't know if there's a distinction between the two. How, how do you see it? I think about it in a couple of ways. I think that there's got to be a time where it's playful because yeah. if it's not, then it's dull and tedious. That's you know, it's got to be playful. Um, Especially if you're trying to do playful work, you've got to be approaching it in a playful way. Like I've got to be messing around while I'm drawing. I think otherwise my drawing ends up feeling quite stiff and dull. Yeah, and kind of just I don't know, a bit lifeless and a little bit mechanical. I, I don't really like that. And I've got to kind of mess around while I'm drawing and not really take it seriously. That's I feel like that's important. Yeah, when I draw. Um, but there's also a part of it where it it is a job. You know, I've just finished drawing a hundred and eighty something page book, and like wow. that is, you know, there's a a graft element to it. Yeah, and that's it's, heavy. It's, serious. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it can get you know, it can get on top of you and it can get you down and you know, not. It, let me break it to you now. It's not all for your joy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, sadly. Um, however, you know, you kind of got to trick yourself into finding the joy inside it somehow. Yeah. Um, and how you do that is, I don't know, it's kind of up to you. But then the, it's balancing that work and that that play. Uh, there's bits where it's working, you do have to work at it. And then there's playful bits where you've got to be playful with it. Um, I find that, I was talking about this when I was teaching in Denmark, I've got to do like I call it like attention surfing where depending on which part of the project I'm working on yeah I've got to keep keep other bits of my brain occupied so if I'm writing I need to keep like the the distractible bits of my brain occupied with like music or something you know right uh, okay yeah yeah to music without lyrics you know so there's no nothing sort of narrative going in to distract me from gotcha. narrative you know going on in there um, and then uh, when I'm coming to the actual drawing bit, when I'm not thinking in storytelling, like I can watch you know things on TV or listen to podcasts or audiobooks or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then all of like the, the creative thinking bits. If there's creative stuff going into my brain, then it's like creative stuff can't come out of it. It's it's kind of strange. So I feel like I have to you know find hacks to make my brain do yes. the things that I want it to do. Yes. Yeah. You know, jimmying the inputs. You know. Yeah, 
Absolutely, yeah, yeah, no, there's sure, definitely... We've, that makes sense. Yeah, we're talking to other artists on, on these sort of things before. Um, I think it was uh, Drawboy Shawnee, um, I, I mm. was talking to, to, to with this, and he was saying that, well, I think we, we kind of were, were, were agreed in that we need to sort of fill up our creative tank, if you like, before we can we can do it. If you, if you don't take in enough media and you sit down to draw after sort of a long period of very dry stuff, it just doesn't mm. work somehow. And it, 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 you need to have some sort of inspiration or, or, or you know, it's got to come from somewhere. Yeah, I agree to a certain extent, but I always find as well that if I take too much in, then I find I, I'm i kind of parroting it out again. Yeah, oh yeah, there is that as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so certainly like on, you know, working on that big book, um, I had to be really sort of hyper aware about what was coming in. So if, if I, you know, I have a tendency when I get super excited about, you know, someone's work, I'm like, oh, this person's brilliant. Uh, I feel like I always have this weird little tendency of, that work starts to seep into my own work. Yes, I know what you mean. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. like a quality of line or an approach to colour, or yeah. like, oh, I love the way they draw shadows, or you know, yeah. something like that. Um, and I can feel it sort of seeping in, which you know, on page 120 of you know 186, <laughs> yes. like, would feel a little bit weird. Absolutely, so, but I think yeah, it's when you're trying to find your style and you're looking for direction and stuff and you do start to incorporate bits of other people's style in there that's wonderful mm. that's that's priceless yeah um, but yeah like you say you don't want to be changing in style halfway, yeah, exactly. halfway or most of the way through a book yeah can you talk about the, the the big book that you've just done is it one of yours or is it um, is it is it embargoed it's another one, it's another one with um, David Gaffney so we did a book a couple oh, years ago called Three Rooms in Valerie's Head um, which was based on a bunch of his microfiction. So he had written uh, a load of stories that are exactly 150 words long. Um, right. And we took a bunch of these stories and sort of meshed them together into a single narrative. Uh, and Top Shelf published that in 2018. I'm looking around to see if I've got a copy of it. I do. Here's a copy of it. Good stuff. Uh, here we go. The three rooms in Valerie's head. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Is that still available? So yeah, yeah. There we go. It's a big long book. It's uh, 120 pages. 100, yeah, 120 pages or so. Um, so that exists. Uh, that's fully available. Fantastic. Who's that published by again? Sorry, what was the uh, top shelf? Top shelf. Okay. There we go. Top shelf. There it is. Um, so that was a good fun book to work on, uh, and we we worked really well together. We've got that sort of uh, equal and opposite senses of humour and. You know, they meshed really nicely in his writing. He basically writes me a novel, and then I um, translate it into comics. Nice. So I get an awful lot of freedom to do kind of my own thing with it. That's and brilliant. It, it, it's kind of a nice relationship. So we've written a, a story together um, that sort of spans from like the late 80s, early 90s to the present day, and there's a comic within a comic that's... Um, <laughs> sort of a space opera with space goblins. Um, <laughs> awesome. It's, it, it's a bit wild. It's got sort of multiple timelines and themes of revenge and vengeance and um, the sort of small obsessions that people have. So it was really fun to draw. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And it's, it's always a bit sad to say goodbye to those characters. Yeah. You draw, them, draw them for the last time and they sort of stiffen up and die. You never draw them again. <laughs> And then they're dead forever. You know, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's an awesome way of putting it. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's, uh, so Alex is on the shelf in here. So is that again? You got what? I'm just drawing some shoes on the shelf. Shoes. Oh, nice. Yeah, you have got to have lots of different stuff in this in this middle aisle. Uh, Alex has, said, has asked if you've had if you have any advice for pitching your comics to publications and publishers. Oh. Um, yeah, the pitch is basically uh, what it essentially is. It's of trying to convince someone that the work is good, uh, that it'll exist in a timely fashion, that there's a full story there, and that no one's going to lose any money. <laughs> Fantastic. It's basically the, prop the proposition <laughs> yeah. um, that you're trying to do. So when you're putting together a pitch, I mean, this was basically what I was talking about when I was in Denmark uh, a week or so ago. Um, 
they were working on pitches. This is what I was helping them develop. Oh, fantastic! So this is this is essentially the proposition. Like I promise that the work I'm going to do is going to be good. Um, here's the full synopsis. This is the story. This is how it's going to work out. Um, this is how it's going to end. Specifically, you know, yeah. stories that will actually conclude rather than sort of peter out. Um, so basically, it's it's a way of mitigating doubt because um, it. Every publishing venture is basically, it's a bet. You know, the yeah. publisher is saying, I bet that this book will make money. And then they hope that it does. <laughs> 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 really, really hope that it does. Because, you know, it's a co- costly business, you know, paying for an advance and then paying for a print run and hoping yeah. that uh, everything comes together in the way that we anticipate. Um, so the, the pitch is, the purpose is, convince them basically that it will be okay like i promise it'll be okay here are the characters the characters are going to be fine um here's the overall story look it's going to be great i promise like here's how it's going to conclude i promise this is great here's a bunch of sample artwork see i can do it i promise <laughs> i told you it's going to be great it will be great um you know so all of those things that are going to uh, help give someone confidence that this thing is going to be good right like that's the, I mean, it's a big kind of oversimplification, I guess, but that's essentially the purpose of it. But no, that's um, good. That's the really, that's a, it's really insightful. Obviously, yeah, you, obviously you are looking at it from from the person who you know who is paying the money, their point of view. So, um, what what are their yeah. main concerns? And yeah, fantastic. I think if you're talking to them, then um, you know, if you've had a route into them, then you know, but through through another means, then that's great. You've got a foot in the door. But if it's if it's fresh, then yeah, they, they are going to worry about those things, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, with um, with Top Shelf, the you know the first book we did, we'd actually made the book. Well, this, sorry, the Three Rooms Valerie's Head. Like yeah. the book existed before we sent it to them because it was um, an arts council project. Oh, great! Um, so, so we didn't really have to convince Chris from Top Shelf that the book would exist. We promised it would be okay because yeah. we'd send him the entire thing and say. Hey, look! It exists and it's okay. And so <laughs> yeah. We actually sent him like a fully bound book and said, "Hey, would you like to publish this?" You know. And so that that was a neat way of sort of mitigating some of that doubt. Um, and then uh, with the second one, because you know we've come to a second print run with that one. Oh, um, brilliant! We've had some some TV interest. Um, oh, cool! Which has been quite quite nice. Wow. Um, hasn't actually gone anywhere, but it means we get to say we've had some TV. Interest. Absolutely. And people will go, wow, that's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, you know, on those instances, he, he knows that he can work with us. He knows that we can put together a good story. So like a lot of those doubts, they're already mitigated. You know, it's, it's already like half of the, that battles won basically. Yeah. Um, but I guess if if it's the first time you've done it, it's a bit more of a, a harder sell because you're literally an unknown quantity at that point. Yeah. Um, so it's it, I've always thought that self-publishing is a really really good way of you know proving that you can do it if you've got yeah. a, um, a track record of you know showing that you can put together you know uh, uh, print ready artwork um, on a fairly regular schedule that people like it they buy it that you yeah. can tell a story and um it prints well you know there's no glaringly obvious awful print mistakes you know what bleeds <laughs> are you know you can keep your type at a legible size you know what margins and gutters are and double page spreads work out and the right pagination order and well you know, yeah there is a lot to think about isn't there <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and it, I, I often think that a lot of those little technical things are sort of, um, it's a nice way to say this, um, sort of aptitude tests. Yeah. Or, you know, a publisher, like, how much um, extra hassle, like, is the designer going to have to put in to get this up to standard for gotcha. publication? Yeah, yeah. You know? Right. It sound, you know, a little bit, I guess, mean or abrupt, but it's, it's a worthwhile way of sort of thinking about it in terms of like what's the worst that could happen yeah how can I mitigate against it really absolutely yeah yeah so uh, when obviously uh, that is a is a collaboration there when um, you know you've obviously got a writer who, who trusts the artist and vice versa w- when you're teaching your your students on courses do you, do you find that they'll they'll naturally um, become 
uh, artists who will be just doing line work. We'll do the whole shebang. It'll be, it'll be you know colorists and doing um, you know all, all all the relevant shading and <laughs> all that sort of stuff as well. Or do you think that there are some people who are just um, drawn to one of the disciplines that that comes out when you are when you're working with them? I think when I started, a lot of people were mainly interested in the sort of Marvel, DC, mainstream, uh, you know, production line. Yeah. Uh, so people were, were interested in becoming a penciler or an inker or, you know, a writer. Like those were the main jobs that people were interested in. But this was yeah. the kind of late 2000s. And I don't think people had been quite as exposed to that sort of singular uh, graphic novelist, mm. you know, the, the, the single voice cartoonist as much at that point, I don't think. Yeah. Um, I, I think by the time I'd left teaching full time, there was very few people who were aspiring to go into, I want to be an Inca. Like right. it, it, most people, like, it, their aspirations were, I want to be in charge of the story and the art and the lettering and everything. Like this is my, yeah. my baby and I, I'm going to nurture it in my own particular way. Yeah. Um, which, you know, that speaks to me. I, I like that uh, element, but I'm a bit of a control freak. So <laughs> that sort of speaks to me anyway. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because I, I've only ever done it through, necess through necessity and just gone, I need to make, do everything in this book because no one else is going to do it. I don't want to pay anybody to do it. So <laughs> I can't afford to. So I'm just going to have to do everything. I'll come up with the story and stuff like that. And yeah, I find, find it's, it's really, uh, you know, it really is fascinating. But I think, you know, I, again, look at other people's work and, and can, you know, understand, take elements from them that I really, really do appreciate. Actually, Una's raised a good point there, just saying it, it, good lettering in comics is really underrated. And I think that's, that's a very good point as well. I love lettering. I absolutely love it. Um, it's one of my favourite things. Uh, I make typefaces as well. Yes, um, of course. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, that's great. Years. Um, it, it's one of those things, uh, when I decided to make a typeface to let my own comics with, um, because uh, it, it, well, I, I smashed my wrist up when I was about mm, 14. Yeah. So like this, this bone here is shorter than this bone here because <laughs> um, this bone got smashed. Oh. pieces. So, so this hand is kind of not on straight. Wow. Um, so I've had to get some operations on it, take bone out of the wrist, and you know it's not been much fun. But I find I, my hand gets fatigued pretty quickly when I'm left. Yeah, I'm sure. Basically. Yeah. So um, yeah, I made it started out just making a typeface, just so I didn't have to you know do that sort of hard impact lettering. I uh, right. I really enjoy it. I like typography anyway. Uh, my background's in design, so uh, you know typography you know speaks to my sort of fastidious nature. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and having a really good typeface that imitates my lettering um, and sort of swaps out characters to make it look organic. Like, yeah. I love it. Absolutely love it. That's pure yeah. joy. Oh. Absolutely fascinating. I'm just just thinking about yeah. I've, I've gone backwards and forwards with you know sort of doing hand lettering in comics, and then no 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 no. I'm going to choose fonts and move it all around myself, and then um, you know trying to make your own font and then use that. Those things online now never that brilliant, are they? The ones that <laughs> the ones that aren't professional make your own font things. It's uh, they're they're never that great. But I am coming to a point now, not with necessarily lettering, but with um, I've got an idea for for a comic, and I've got. Uh, a lot of, sort of some characters sort of drawn out, and I know I've got lots of content in my head about what I'm going to do with it, and it's um, I'm really excited about it. Well, now one thing that's also given me an extra sort of source of excitement is I'm thinking maybe maybe I do do the lines and I ink this myself, but I I give it to a colorist because I think oh. that. Uh, I, a, it's very time consuming, and B, I don't think it's my strongest skill. Um, when I come up with stuff, I'm like, well, I think. If someone could make my stuff look even, look better than the, than I could imagine it, and I know obviously that you know there are some wonderful colorists out there. I, you know, could mm. name a good few that that I know you know just from the circuit that are wonderful, wonderful colorists. I was thinking, oh, if I could just if I raise a bit of money and then actually gave it to them to do, I think it would it would add more to it. And obviously, it's not then I haven't got complete control. It's not just my baby, but there isn't really a doubt in my head that it would look better if I gave it to somebody who's a professional colorist. You know, so it's, <laughs> so but yeah, there is that. It's just that letting go. I think of that little bit. Yeah, uh, see, I, I find it really difficult because I'm a um, I'm an absolute control freak. I mean, yeah. I think we've we've established this already. <laughs> um, but I always find that like my line work by itself. 
you know, my, part of my problem has always been that I found the, the line work always looks naked. Um, I, I, you probably can tell by now that I've got a fairly loose and, um, you know, let's 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 use a kind word. Let's say it's dynamic. <laughs> yeah, it is um, dynamic. Yeah, it's, and it's characterful. <laughs> it's, it's you know, it's a, if, if we take all the colour off this funny little bird with a guitar. Yeah, you know, the the line work for me it looks wobbly and naked and just a bit grim, and I, I really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, unsure as to its merits. Let's let's say that. But no, I think. Uh, I think I you... to... <laughs> so I was just going to say, you're... That the, yeah. the drawing isn't finished for me until it's had color. Yeah, and it, 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 it really is as if it's part of the drawing. Yeah, I think that for you it definitely is. Yeah, I think with mine you could easily separate the black lines from from what's inside, but with yours it really is. A, it's a left hand and a right hand that makes makes a hole there, isn't it? It's that's not yeah, that's yeah. not a phrase, but um, <laughs> you know what I mean by that. It, it, yeah, it, it, <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> no one makes a whole hand with the right hand and the left hand, and you make a Captain Planet super hand, and it's. <laughs> It's actually, if anything, less of a hand if you put two together. <laughs> weird ten-fingered meatball. <laughs> ten-fingered meatball. Yes, this is <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Oh dear. Too many knuckles for a meatball. <laughs> I would not be eating that meatball. No, no, thank you. Not appetising. No. 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 <laughs> Right, should we move on to the last thing now? Because I'm very, very warm now. And I need to get out. <laughs> You've made me laugh too much. Right, I'm going to sling that aside. What we're going to do is okay. draw the last thing with our eyes closed. But it's not going to be as... Okay. Uh, it's not going to be as... Uh, Are we... Uh, <laughs> in depth. <laughs> Shall I try and paint it? With my eyes closed. Yeah, well. please, absolutely. And I'll try and colour in as well because I've got my pens here as well, so that's fair. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to hold the um, the paintbrush um, in my hand at the same time. So, do you know what a uh, ring-tailed lemur looks like? Well, if I'm not going to be able to look at it while I'm drawing it, it doesn't matter. Really, doesn't does matter, it? does it? No, forget. <laughs> Fine. Uh, okay. Right, a ring-tailed lemur. Yeah. That's it. That's okay, it. That's all we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't go too oh, ambitious okay. with these ones. Right. Okay. So if I bring my hat over my face, I think. Like, <laughs> like that right one. Okay. Okay. My pens are there, so I have to just remember and grab one. Okay. Right. Right. I'm gonna have to um, sort of scouts on a um, promise. I'm not gonna. Um, I believe you. Yeah. I mean, the quality <laughs> of the drawing is gonna prove that I'm not looking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies in advance for <laughs> how badly this goes. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Is is my um my hand in shot? Yes, it is. Yeah. Just the page. Ring-tailed lemur. Okay, right. here we go. They've got tiny little orange eyes, haven't they? Oh, have they? Oh dear. Like little, little unhappy little mouth with like little ears. With a big round. Oval shaped heads with. <laughs> oh, no, this is ring so tails so... there. Now I've lost. <laughs> yeah, you lost your position. <laughs> I've completely lost. I've yeah. lost. Uh, let's call that a hand there. And this one's probably waving or something, but he's stood on a branch. That's definitely oh, a branch. Yeah, That's think... wood grain. Okay. Right there. And you can tell because there's leaves. I think my pencil's running out. Leaves, leaves. And because his tail's got rings on, I think. Oh, the rings, I forgot the rings. Ring. Yeah, well. hang on, I was going to have to go around. I'll draw a different colour for right. the rings because I don't know what colour I'm using. Right. Um, Found my watercolour water. <laughs> don't knock anything <laughs> over, please. Right. Uh, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, oh, yes. That's absolutely fine. Shit. <laughs> Put an advisory on it. Oh, good God. Right. Okay. The tails. Um, oh, there's a hand somewhere over here, I think. Okay. Right. I think that's the branch. <laughs> <sighs> I think these are going to be like the stripes on his back. It's going to look like Garfield exploded. Garfield <laughs> <laughs> exploded. I like it. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Oh wow, yours is great. I'm not at all unhappy with that. That's all fantastic. Right. Okay. right, I'm closing my eyes again because I'm going back in. Okay, you go for, go for go for round two. This is <laughs> Una's commented. This is going swimmingly. <laughs> She's absolutely right. <laughs> Oh, I missed that completely. Oh, that was great. Okay, no, I'm leaving that there. That is, is good. Yeah, that's. Ah, oh, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> I can kind of see I mean, where it went wrong. I think what it might look like. Do you know the um that little animal that's on the Ice Age movies at the start? Uh, yes. That little rat thing. Uh, it looks like that. I've drawn. If you look very closely, you can see its little <laughs> eyes and the nose in there. <laughs> good to so. Oh, yeah, I'm really I'm, impressed with yours, Dan. That is that is a fantastic piece of art. I'm frankly, I'm delighted. I've got to be honest. <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> show you my astonished little face because I'm gonna. I think that people are gonna believe that I was cheating. <laughs> I don't believe it for a second. I think you're just naturally very talented. <laughs> yes, you gonna get a little frame. <laughs> It's beautiful. <laughs> it's so good. I'd be pleased I if I'd drawn that. Got completely misregistered. <laughs> His expression oh is priceless as well. He's like, uh, uh. I, think, I think this could have, like, uh, you know, I think this could have been the one. This could have been the one to end my career on. Like, <laughs> oh, no! Absolutely defining moment. I mean, if, if, if those colours had registered, oh, that would have yeah. been it for me. Well, it's it's been off into the sunset. It's it's creation has been preserved here, so it's forever on YouTube. <laughs> you can direct people to it to watch your masterpiece. I don't think I want to watch it back because I'll be shouting at myself like you fool. You could have ended it tonight. The curse could have been broken. That is absolutely magical. <laughs> Good stuff. Right as we come to the end of this, I'm going to put the um, I'm going to put your one of these books behind me there so let's go in front of you there and could you give any of your links out so where do people find you online what's the pod where do we find the podcast where do we find your shop books everything sure uh things by dan uh i'm on instagram i'm on twitter and um, that's my website things by uh that's where you can find me uh the, the things by dan website has like a bunch of comics on it, and a bunch of drawings on it that goes back like ages, like <laughs> a decade. Like it's just it goes back and back and back. Um, uh, the podcast is Make It Then Tell Everybody. If you search on your favourite podcast uh, app, you'll find it. Uh, it's on Spotify. Uh, you can listen there. Uh, it comes up uh, mostly once a week, depending on how busy I am and what happens with everyone else's schedules. Um, it has a Patreon, patreon.com slash make then tell. Um, that's like a dollar an episode. And that's good because it uh, <laughs> basically it both synthesizes your goodwill into food that goes into me and my children. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's really good because great. it's it works not just not just every month, but every episode. So if there is a period where you yeah. don't do them, you don't pay for them. So it's a fantastic system. Yeah, it makes me feel much better. <laughs> <laughs> Takes the guilt away, away much, yeah. for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And has your shop got the uh, the, the, the pens and uh, anything else that you create as well? Yes, yeah, there's, there's a link uh, from the Things by Dan that go to UK website to my shop. And there's some stuff on there. There's some uh, there's some original artwork on there at the moment. Uh, I'm nearly completely out of books. Um, I've Fantastic. nearly sold out of like, everything I think I've nearly sold out of pens um, and because I've been doing this for so long I'm thinking do I reprint things do I do like a collection like a omnibus like full stop start again like new decade let's start again with a whole new catalogue uh, I haven't quite decided yet I don't know um, we'll see yeah just yeah, see yeah. Yeah. whatever you fancy who knows it's all good yeah. <laughs> yeah. no one's me yeah get to the that's awesome Dan it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to, to yeah. draw with you and to, to catch up with you today so thank you so much for your for your time today uh, do follow Anyone Dan on like Twitter to, um, lean in and kiss the lemur kiss the uh, kiss the ring tailed lemur right on his lovely round yeah. face right there <laughs> 
turn that little frown upside down. <laughs> Alex is saying love it. Una is saying this has been lovely. Thank you guys for watching as well as uh, as well as Dan for for all your time today. It's been a real uh, it's been a long time coming. I know I approached you about about this uh, a long while ago as, uh, as as one of my my big guests. I really wanted to to, to have a chat with and um, yeah, I didn't. And then I stopped the series for a while <laughs> while things were going on. So we're back with a bang. We're back with a Dan. And thank you so much. Good stuff. I'll bid you all farewell. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure.